I want to welcome you to this Wednesday night Bible study. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Pastor Dale Jensen. I'm the pastor at Praise Tabernacle, located at 306 21st Street Southwest in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'd also like to give you our web page. We're located at rochesterpraise.org. So anytime you please come and join us at our webpage or listening to these videos. May the Lord bless you. I want to come with come to you tonight with a teaching that comes from the Old Testament, but I want to call it the necessity of a new creation. When God creates something, it's because he's already decreated what came before it. Now I want to talk to him about the decreation of the Old Covenant with the creation of the New Covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome everyone that is listening tonight. I hope this will be a blessing unto you and grant you understanding because we are aware of the hour that we live in, but we're also aware of what the Word of the Lord teaches us. And God said he was going to do a new creation, and he has done that. So I want to introduce you to this topic. I want to go to the book of Isaiah 43, beginning with verse 18 through 24. The new creation that God has created is through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that will cause you to understand that what we are talking about is the new covenant and the new creation Many people liken the nation of Israel as the old church, the old covenant, but now the church has become the new covenant or that which was created by the Lord himself. He will say, according to this new covenant that he will make, remember I told you before, he said he would make a new covenant with the nation of Israel and Judah, not according to the former covenant. This is a brand new covenant and that's why we call it a new creation. He says, according to the new covenant, you will re remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He's talking about remember the things of the new creation, and you can forget the former things of the old covenant, because actually the new covenant has replaced the old covenant. So I want to go to Jeremiah now, chapter 16. And verse 14, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It's because God is creating a new covenant. And now the new covenant is the church, and it's also the will of God, and the brought forth according to the very plan of God that he had from the very beginning. As I've told you, the plan of God from the very beginning was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was talking about his first coming and then going to the cross of Calvary, offering his body up for a sacrifice. But we'll begin to read here. Now I want to go to verse 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is he's talking about the new covenant through the rivers of the living water. Remember Christ spoke about the living waters that shall be in you. But this is according to the new covenant which was prophesied in the old. All the, co all the prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of this new covenant that would come forth. So you must understand the teachings of the prophets of the Lord in the Old Testament, basically from Isaiah on through Jeremiah, all of those. They spoke of the new covenant that was to come, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we are knowing it as a new creation created by God himself, where old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So he's talking about the spirit that would be poured out. As Zechariah said, it's not by power or might, but it's by my spirit. 
They are all talking about the new creation or the new covenant that the Lord God would bring forth in order to bring forth salvation to the whole world. So in the church, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, Greek, barbarian, male or female, because we're all one in Christ Jesus according to the new covenant that he has brought forth. So now I want to go to this book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning with verse 17 through 21. It's talking about what God is going to do under the new creation. Yes, he's going to, the new creation is the church, but also his people become part of the new creation. And we will have part in the new creation. This is what I want to show you that Apostle Paul has showed to us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you notice the new covenant of being in Christ? Paul always mentioned being in Christ. He said he is a new creature. So we are new creatures before the Lord. All the Lord sees is his new creation and his new creatures, which is his church and his people. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He's talking about the new creation. Now I want to go to Revelations chapter 21 and verse 5. It says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And the book of Revelation is talking about the coming forth of the new covenant. That's what Revelation is about. And it begins to show you who is the Lord over the covenant, who sits on the throne. And that's why it says, He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Now let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. Excuse me. He said, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. This is talking about the new covenant that has come forth where we have been reconciled to God by Jesus Christ and the cross and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You notice what has been given and become our part to do as a new creature in Christ Jesus? That's why we are created and we're also be formed in the, the image of Christ, that Christ may be formed in us, the Apostle Paul has said, according to the new creation. And the new creation is through the Spirit of the Lord that is in us. We are able to preach the gospel, and he has recommended or given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And he gives that to all of us, that the people may be reconciled to God. And that's all part of his new creation and all part of the new covenant. Now let's go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. Where it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, how? By the death of his Son. I mean, by the death of Christ. It's how we were reconciled under the new covenant. The answer to that is yes. Much more being reconciled, that means we are already reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What God has placed in us through the new covenant is his spirit, and he has given us life. He said, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, not according to the old covenant, but according to the new. So that's why salvation comes by receiving the spirit of the Lord into your life. And he empowers us to do the work of reconciliation through the gospel, which is the reason that he died, was buried and resurrect to establish his new creation or the church or the new covenant, as you wish to, to call it. So our job is for reconciliation. Now I want to go to the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what the New Testament speaks of, yes, is God's new creation, but he created it in order to bring forth salvation and redemption, but this is only done through the sacrifice of Christ. The book of Hebrews tells you there will never 
be another sacrifice that will take away our sins. Even though man wants to go back to the old covenant, God said it is done away with. They want to reinstitute the animal sacrifices, but they are not accepted of God because he has accepted the sacrifice of Christ. So let's continue on. Now let's go back to verse 20 of First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians 5, verse 20. It says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech us, beseech you by us, talking about the Apostle Paul, we pray you in Christ's stead, we, you be reconciled to God, we implore you. But under the New Testament and the New Covenant and God's new creation, you can be reconciled to God. And that's why we preach the covenant, the New Covenant, because the old could never reconcile you to God but the new has. So now let's go to verse 21 of the same. God is actually imploring us to enter in and be reconciled. And the only way you can be reconciled is through the gospel of Christ. When you turn to Christ with repentance, you're baptized in Jesus' name by water for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now let's go to verse 21. For he hath made him, or Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Because according to the Old Testament, even to the law, you needed to be righteous in order to be saved. Under the new covenant, our righteousness does not come by keeping the law, but by becoming a new creature or part of God's creation becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. And this is why it's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God has placed that in the hands of all of us, but we must understand the part of his new creation. Now let's go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Now let's go to verse 20. Here it is talking about the beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls. I want to show you if you read my other, if you've listened to my other teachings about the dragon, you know who it is. And the owls is simply the place that it's a representation of the demons. Ultimately, every knee, even the devil and his angels will have to bow to Christ and admit that he is Lord even over them. And he's talking about the demonics of the owls of the wilderness, as I told you before, is a place of demonic activity. And the reason he has done this, because I have given water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. But here he is talking about the new covenant people, his new creation. And that's why we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost it's like rivers of living water flowing to us. Remember Christ in the book of John? In that last day, the great day of the feast, he stood and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He said, This spake he of the Spirit that they had not yet received, because he was not yet glorified. So the spirit, the element, is in the New Testament and the Word of God, which we are to be obedient to. And he tells us this new creation he has formed for himself. Remember, we started out in verse 18, talking about the new creation of God. And he is literally talking about the new creation that he would form under the new covenant. And he literally says, you and I that have come in to the new covenant. He said, the people that I have formed for myself. You notice the new covenant, the people were formed for himself, for the Lord himself. They shall shew forth my praises and declare his praises. And this is why he has done a new creation. I want to take you now to the book of Matthew 21, verse 43, that you will see that Jesus himself 
because they killed him and slew him. I want to go to, to verse 40 or 39 and begin to read that to you out of the scriptures itself so you can understand clearly what the Lord is speaking of. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard. It's talking about the Lord that would come, the Son of God that would come. They would do this to him. And they would ultimately want to take his heritage from him. And I'm here to tell you, no one will be able to take away the heritage that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ because he has paid the price for it through the death, burial, and resurrection. And he has brought forth his church, which he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. When the Lord said this, he meant it. So they were going to kill him, according to verse 38, and let us take take and seize upon his inheritance. Verse 40 says, When the Lord thereof the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto these husbandmen? Or he's talking about to the people of the old covenant that broke the covenant of the Lord. They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of in their season. He's talking about the new will also under the new covenant, the new creation, will render the fruits in their season. Jesus read unto them, Did you have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner, and this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in his sight. What he's saying, the new covenant, the new creation is marvelous in his sight. Verse 43 is what I really want to read to you. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. He's speaking to the nation of Israel and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. According to the new creation, this nation is the church. Peter calls us a holy nation, a peculiar people that have come forth to show the praises of those he's cut or called out of utter darkness onto his marvelous light who were not a people, but now have become the people of God. The Lord tells us, according to his new creation, we would become the children of God, and that includes us Gentiles. So now I want to go to verse 22 of Isaiah 49, excuse me, Isaiah 43, excuse me. But thou shalt call upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. He's talking about his new creation will call upon, he, upon his name because the old people did not call upon his name. So he has created a new creation, which is the church. But it says, the Israel, you've been weary of me, O Israel. But his true church will never grow weary of him. So now I want to show you why the Lord spoke these things, that they did not call upon him. Let's go to Malachi 1 and verse 13. You said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, and you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand? Saith the Lord. The law strictly prohibited them from bringing animals and offering to God that were torn, that were lame or with sick, that were sick. Nevertheless, they brought them, and the Lord said, Should I accept this of your hand? The answer to that is no. Now I want to go back to Malachi 3 and verse 14. Here again, this is before the coming of the new covenant. As you read in the book of Malachi, it's talking about the coming of the new covenant where God would send forth his messenger, who is John, who calls Elijah before the day of the coming of the Lord. So what he is always pointing to is the new covenant. All the prophets of the Old Testament were preaching and teaching of the new covenant or the new creation that God himself would bring forth. Verse 14 of Malachi 3, You have said it is vain to serve God. 
And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? You see, they said, we have grown weary, Lord, of serving you. That's why we as the people of God should never grow weary of serving our Lord. So now I want to go to verse 23 of Isaiah 43. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle or of the burnt offerings, or you haven't brought forth what I have required of you. Neither hast thou honored me with the fat of the sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve me with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. What the Lord is saying, I no longer want your sacrifices, your incense, because you bring to me sick animals, those that have been torn, and you offer them to me. And the Lord says, do you think I'm going to receive this? This is why the Bible talks about the sacrifice of Christ under the new covenant and under God's new creation. Now let's go to verse 24. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sin. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. Or God said, you are wearied of me, now I'm wearied of you, because you have brought me forth, you have not brought forth the type of sacrifice that he desired. So now I want to go to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 14. He's literally telling him here, I'm not going to receive your feast or the new moons that you come to celebrate. Isaiah 1 and verse 14, it says, Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are troubled unto me. I am weary to bear them, or I'm not. you have not satisfied me. So you begin to see why God has brought forth the new creation that the prophet Isaiah spoke of. It's a new covenant that Jeremiah and Ezekiel also spoke of. And in this, we would have a new heart and a new spirit so that we may be able to serve the Lord. Now I want to go into what is the new creation. The new creation of the Lord is the church that he has created under the new covenant. Now let's go to Isaiah 65 and verse 17. It says, behold, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not remember nor come into mind. He's talking about his new creation. And he said, the former things are done away with. I've created the new heavens and the new earth. All that is is talking about his new creation through the new covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ. The new creation is nothing less than what he has created, which is the church of the living God. Now let's go to Isaiah 66 and verse 22. It's for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I shall make, shall remain before me. He's saying the new covenant and the church that he has brought forth will remain before him. Saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Now I want to go to the New Testament. I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 13 to show you that he is speaking of the new covenant that was to bring forth, but he speaks of it in a manner of creation, like he showed us in the book of Genesis about the creation. Now he is creating, but he is creating the new covenant and the church for his own pleasure. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. What he is talking about, he is the old covenant is being done away with, as spoken in the book of Hebrews. He is creating uh, what he calls a new heaven and a new earth, which literally means the new covenant. He has done away with the old. And he's literally telling you that the old covenant 
is done away with. And that's what he's talking about by the symbolism which he talks about. He's created a new heavens and a new earth. He's not talking about a physical earth, but he's talking about the new covenant and the going away of the old covenant. So now let's go to verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, or the old covenant shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? He is saying when this comes to his tuition, his fruition, you will know that you must live a holy and a godly life. He said, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. He's literally talking about the old covenant while he now brings in his new creation that he spoke of in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. God's new creation comes in through the new covenant and through Christ himself. Now let's go to verse 13. He says, Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Righteousness surely tells you of the new covenant, because the new covenant, the kingdom of God, comes through the Spirit of the Lord, and it comes through, through righteousness, peace, and joy through the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom of God, it tells us, is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And this is his new creation that he has brought forth. So this is found in Romans 14 and verse 17, still speaking about the new covenant. So now, as I told you, the book of Revelation is talking about the bringing forth of the new covenant. Now let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1 through 5. Here the Apostle John says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. What he is seeing is the fulfillment of that which was prophesied by Isaiah when he would bring forth the new heavens and the new earth, or the new covenant and the new creation of God, which is the kingdom of God. He says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth of the old covenant were passed away and there was no sea or the old covenant, which many called the old church, has been done away with because God has made all things new. Now let's go to Revelation 21 and verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. So we see the holy city that they were talking about is the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride. Now, who is the bride of Christ? Is it not the church? So what he has seen ascending down from heaven is the new creation, the new heaven and the earth, the new covenant that God has made with mankind. Hallelujah. It says the old covenant, the old church passed away, the new covenant has come, which is the church. Verse, and it says it's prepared for the bride, as a bride, which is the church adorned for her husband, which is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Under the new creation, he has a new bride, which is the church of the living God. Let's go to verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. What is God is saying according to the new covenant? He will be with us. He will dwell among us. Did he not say, I will not leave you or forsake you? Where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. But this is according to to the new covenant and God's new creation, which is the church. So the Bible plainly teaches us that the new Jerusalem is the church of the living God. And the people that have come forth under his new creation, as he told us, the only thing that's important to him is a new creature, which we are. And we have come forth through his new creation, 
that was prophesied by the Old Testament prophets at the first coming of the Lord and the bringing forth of the new covenant. So let's go now to Leviticus 26 and verse 11, where God promised that he will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhorred you. So he's placed his tabernacle in the midst of us. Remember in the beginning of Revelation, they saw one like in the Son of Man in the midst of the seven candlesticks, which represent the church of the living God. So we know that he is talking about the church. And the church has literally become God's people, his new creation. Now let's go to verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any no more pain, for the firmer things are passed away. What he's talking about, our entrance into the new covenant. So now I want to go to Isaiah 25, verse 8 and 9. Here it says, and through the prophet Isaiah again, he will swallow up death in victory. Does not the Bible talks about the victory that Christ had over death, hell, in the grave? This is done according to the new covenant that God has made, which he brought forth through his death, burial, and resurrection to destroy the works of the enemy. The enemy no longer has the power that many people give to him because the Lord is on our side. He fights for his church and he is with us. And he says, I will wipe away, wipe away their tears from off all the faces and they rebuke and the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from off all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. The Lord spoke through the prophet Isaiah about his new creation or the coming forth of Christ. As you look through the book of Isaiah, you notice it talks about the new ruler that was to come according to Isaiah 9, 6 and the prophecy that would come forth through, also through seven fourteen, of the coming of the Messiah. So now I want to go to verse 9 of the Isaiah chapter 25. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him. You mean it was our God that they were waiting for that brought forth the new covenant through the death and resurrection of Christ? The Bible strictly tells you they were waiting for their God to come to save them and that's exactly what he did through the person of Jesus Christ, who was God, manifested in the flesh. It said, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and we will say he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So you see the prophet Isaiah was talking about the first coming of the Lord going to the cross, shedding his blood, and bringing forth the new covenant of righteousness through Christ Jesus our Lord. There is none of us righteous, but only made righteous by the righteousness of Christ. And it shows us the new covenant was made to bring forth his salvation. And he has overcome death, hell, and the grave. He says, let's go now to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to read part of verse 54 and then verse 55 to you to show you that death has been swallowed up through the Lord Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection because he came to destroy he that had power over death. And that's exactly what he did according to the first coming of Christ. He destroyed the works of the devil. So let's continue on in verse 54. 54, he says, death is swallowed up in victory. That's what Isaiah spoke of. When was it done? At the death and resurrection of Christ when he overcame the powers of death, hell, and the grave. So now I want to go to verse 55. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Christ was victorious over all of these things. He is now sitting in heaven, 
sitting on the throne and ruling and reigning over his kingdom that he has brought forth through the new covenant through his own sacrifice at the cross of Calvary. This is why he was speaking of a new creation. This is why the prophet said, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. Now I want to go back to verse 6. In the book, the book of Revelation 21 and verse 6, he said unto me, It is done. What does he mean? He's talking about the new creation, the church. It is done. And that's why he said at the cross, it is finished. He has done away with the old creation, the old heaven and earth, and brought in the new heaven and earth, which is the creation through Christ of the new covenant and the kingdom of God, and it is the church of the living God. He said, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely. And he's talking about the church where we can receive the spirit. And if you're truly thirsty, he will give us water to us and give us life freely. And according to the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 25, the doors of the church are the doors of salvation are continually open. You can look this up in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 25. Now that you know that the church is the new Jerusalem, the new creation of God is the church. So now I want to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 22 through 23 to show you that the New Jerusalem is the church of the living God, and it's all part of his new creation that he has brought forth through the new covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is heir of all things, as Hebrew 1, 2 tells you. Christ is the true heir of everything. No one, no person, no devil is going to take the kingdom from him. And that's why we are fighting today against the powers that come against the New Testament church. That's why I've told you, church, to pray against the powers that are in this earth. We will overcome them because God has said in his word that we are more than overcomers through Christ who loves us. It says, but you are come unto Mount Zion and unto that city. You notice he's talking about a city? Was not the new Jerusalem called the city of the living God? The heavenly Jerusalem, or the new Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Now the very next verse shows you that he is talking about the church, his new creation. It says to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Where is our name written? In heaven, in the book of life, according to the new covenant that we have entered in. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. He's talking about those that were just under the Old Testament or the righteous. They were made perfect also by the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, and this is why the New Covenant and the New Testament is brought forth. Christ coming in his first coming, destroying the powers of the enemy in order to bring forth the church. Did he not say, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it? So this is very beautiful. Even Abraham himself, to whom the promises were given, do you know that he was looking for this city? When you go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 10 tells you that Abraham was looking for a city. He was not looking for any earthly kingdom. He was looking for the kingdom of God. And that's why the Bible says when Jesus said, Abraham has seen my day and he gloried in it. And this is why the revelation has come forth that the new creation comes through Christ Jesus 
and it is nothing more or less than the New Testament church that he has brought forth is the new creation and the kingdom of God is here as Christ has proclaimed. So are you looking for that same city that Abraham was looking for? Do you know the seed of Abraham was Christ? And through Christ we become the seed and the lineage of Abraham according to the new covenant, not the old. That's why he said heaven and earth has passed away or the old covenant. Behold, I make things new. All this symbolism is talking about is the doing away of the old covenant and the entrance into the new creation of God, the new covenant, the kingdom of God, and our salvation. So may the Lord bless you today. I want to thank you for listening to this. I hope it has enriched your life. If you are truly looking for that city whose builder and maker is God, come in through the new covenant, through repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Because if you do these first two steps, God has promised to those that are obedient, they shall receive his spirit. So the Lord bless you. Let him shine his countenance upon you, give you peace and rest. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you.